All right. So today I want to talk a little bit about you can do uh, test-driven development with the ArcGIS API for JavaScript. So we're going to take a look at using Jest with the API to write some unit tests. Okay. So Jest is probably uh, one of the most popular uh, JavaScript testing frameworks you can find today. Uh, it's pretty popular with React, even Angular. Uh, it has a lot of um, commu large community around it and a lot that you can do with it. Now, I'll be honest, I have a few issues with Jest I'll cover in a minute, but at the end of the day, it does work. So let's talk about doing test-driven development, okay? So test-driven development basically means I'm gonna write my tests and let them guide me to build my app. Um, I kind of treat this almost like I do with my TypeScript. I use my, my typings and everything to kind of uh, drive how I'm gonna, uh, create my application, the different types I need and stuff like that. So it's very similar in that regard. Um, but you'll see what I mean in a minute here as we start writing some tests. So first off, what I've done is I've already installed uh, Jest in this application. Uh, I have a test watch uh, script here. It's just going to run Jest. I'm going to run it on the source folder. So any uh, test that finds it here. I'm also going to go and do coverage tests as well and then put it in watch mode. Right, so we've got that happening for us here. I've got my Jest config set up over here. Now there are a couple of key things you want to do with Jest, right? So Jest does have experimental ESM support, technically. Uh, it's not 100% though, it's not quite perfect. It's kind of a, will bite you here and there. And that's because your tests can be written in these, as ESM, but any third-party libraries that you use um, need to get loaded via loader somehow and I believe it's still converted back into CommonJS uh, for Jest to be able to consume them. They can do it a few different ways. Uh, one of them is be able to use uh, Babel to do that conversion for you to have your JavaScript. But if you're using TypeScript, you can tell TS Jest to go ahead and use uh, the Jest files and go and transform those for you. And use that under the transform option of your Jest's config. Right? So that's what I've done here. Uh, there's not much else to it. Uh, in TS config, I do want to allow JS, set that to be true. And once you've done that, you should be on a pretty good path to get started. So let's go to write some tests. So first off, of course, I'm gonna I'm gonna have a small file map application that's gonna create my map and everything. It's gonna expose um, uh, a function or maybe a couple of functions to uh, work with the map, right? So let's go ahead and first thing we want to do, we're gonna import all as map from map, all right? So this is my spec file here. Uh, it's going to get an error because um, it's not a module, right? So if I save that, it's going to error out. So I need to have something in here. It's going to export something so it's a module. And then I'm going to run my uh, test in here. And this will fail. Uh, I should fail right away because I got this error in here. So yeah, so we're failing right now. So I like to have like a initialize method um, in these little utility helpers there, right? So I'm going to go ahead and export... Um, make an async function just for fun and we'll call it initialize okay so that that's going to fix this particular error here so now I need to start writing some tests so I'm going to go ahead and do something like uh, describe so this is a behavior driven development I guess you would say but that doesn't really matter uh, so I go I put the name of what I'm testing in here and then I just want to say that it, and typically you would write them like, it should uh, do something. It should initialize the map, which is fine. You can do that. And you know, I'll be honest, I do this most of the time too. I've seen people recommend that maybe you should write, you know, be a little bit more optimistic here. It will initialize the map, right? You know, just put a smile on your face. So it's going to initialize my map. And right now it's going to pass because it's not doing anything, right? So... Okay, I need to have it do some stuff for me. So the first thing I want to do is I need to say that um, it's doing a wait. And we're going to say that map dot initialize. But this should take a container, right? Where am I going to put this map? So I'll make that container uh, a div element. So document dot create element. Oops. No, no, like this. Container is equal to document dot 
create element. It'll be a diff. And I'll pass it in here. So first off, I gotta make this an async method here. Okay, so it's gonna fail because it doesn't, uh, it's a type failure at this point because it doesn't take a container over here. So okay, let's make that pass. I'm not really testing anything at this point. I'm just making the code uh, pass uh, or passing sync. So okay, so now I can take that, right? Uh, save, save the list. Sometimes Jess will do this. I've got to quit and rerun it, rerun it for it to uh, kind of catch it. So there we go. Okay. Make this a little bit bigger here. All right, all right. So I've got my one test pass. Not for our testing purposes here. I'm going to go ahead and turn off coverage. Don't really need it for what we're doing. Uh, for your larger application, uh, if you're writing a bunch of code, you might want that coverage to kind of help guide you uh, in terms of uh, how much of these methods and stuff you're testing. But it's not really required. I just really care if the test is passing or not. So tests are running and one test pass, one pass. Okay, okay. So when I do this, I kind of expect that I'm going to initialize a map. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and uh, import ArcGIS map from ArcGIS core slash map. Perfect. So I expect this to get called at some point. So what am I going to do? I'm going to say that uh, you can do this a couple ways. Uh, the easiest way is to just do something like this. Do just dot mock. And then you're going to mock whatever the module is that you want to mock in your code, right? Now remember, you're not going to be testing the uh, code in the ArcGIS API for JavaScript. You only care that maybe whatever method you call it, you know, like on a map or something like that, are getting uh, called, right? You're testing your code, not the API uh, functionality that you're using from third-party libraries. So in this case here, I expect ArcGIS map to have been called once. And this is failing. That has not been called at all. So, okay, so now I need to go ahead and create a map here, meaning I have to go ahead and uh, import this module here. So the first thing I'm going to do is go to create my map. And I'll go ahead and give it uh, oops. Let's go ahead and give it a base map in this case. And we're just going to say streets vector. Normally, I would have my API key set up and everything. And I would use one of the uh, API base maps. Because that's kind of what you're supposed to do it these days. But uh, for testing purposes and demo right now, I'm not going to do that. Okay, so that test is now passing, right? Well, okay, I just don't want to initialize the map. I need to initialize uh, the view. So it's also neat to initialize the map. And we'll just say, and view here, right? So now I want to do the same thing here. So I want to import map view from ArcGIS core views map view. Oops, not map view base. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, copy this again. And let's do a little just dot mock here. And I expect the same thing from map view. I expect map view to have been called one time. Okay, and it has not. So, okay, let's go to create our view. View is equal to new. Map view. Now, the internals of what I actually call it with aren't necessarily important for my testing purposes. Like, if I set the uh, uh, the center or something like that, uh, that's not really the kind of thing that I'm testing. I really, really care that I am passing it, everything I need to pass it to in here. And let me do the container up above. Uh, do it like this. Makes me feel a little better to do it like this. So, okay. And then I'm going to go ahead and return the view in this case. I don't need to test that return, I'm just returning it. So, okay, okay. So now I've gone ahead, I've written this simple little function, uh, pretty easy, right? I mean, that's not a lot. 
Um, just make sure it's doing what I expect it to do. But what about if I had another function that I want to test? Let's try something like um, it will zoom to a location. And let's make this async again, just in case. And in this case here, um, let's just go ahead and we'll do the same thing we did here. Yeah, let's do this again here. All right, so now what I expect is uh, I want to go ahead and call a go to on the map view, right? So I expect to get a, a map dot uh, zoom to location and pass it a point, something, right? So I'm going to go ahead and do this. I'm going to create a point. Hold on, oops. Point is going to be equal to type point. It's going to have a X of a, I don't know, let's just say 65 and a Y of 65, just for fun. Um, yeah, I think that's all I need to do here. All right, so let's go ahead and pass that point here. That's going to fail because I don't have anything exposed here. So I need to create another function here. Export async function. Zoom to location. And I expect to take a, a point in here. And that point is going to be of a... Uh, no, let's just get the types in here. So let's say we have a type string, uh, x number, and y number. Okay, so that's going to go ahead and pass. Uh, now what I want to do is I want to... Um, I need to mock some stuff here. So for Jest, you can do this really cool stuff. So I can go ahead and here, and I can say something like, pass a function, and then I'm going to return uh, function. Then what I want to do is I want to mock some implementation, right? So mock implementation, then pass this a function, and this could be the object that gets returned whenever when I new it up inside of my test. So I want to return uh, an object that's going to have the go to method on here. Now, how do I test this go that the go to method actually gets called? What I want to do is I want to run something that here says expect go to to have been called one time and maybe with the point or something like that. So in Jest, you can create these small helpers up here. So I'm going to put a very at the very top. Now, here's one caveat I found. So I've made my mock go to is going to be equal to just dot function. So the caveat is, according to just documentation, if you have a variable with the name uh, starts with a mock, it should get hoisted to the top of the compiler code. However, I found that's not always the case. So I put these mocks at the very top before my imports. So I'm manually hoisting it to the top of the file. So now what I can do is I can go ahead and say that this is going to be equal to my mock go to so then what I can say down here is that when I call map zoom to location, I can go ahead and uh, do an expect mock go to to have been called. Let's just say it's been called, right? So that's going to fail right away. Okay, perfect. So now what I want to do over here, my code, let me give myself a little bit more room here. Uh, so I can go ahead and add access to it here. I'm going to create another uh, a variable here, an uh, empty object called app. Make it any type for demo purposes. I would normally give it like a real type of some sort. I'll say app.view. And now it's accessible to other functions in this module, right? Okay, so basically it's basically just going to do something very simple. I'm going to say to. And the target is going to be the point. Okay, so it would be good if I actually assigned uh, the view to this app.view object so that it can actually run because right now it's just not going to run. All right, so app view go to. So, okay, so test pass. So it was called. Now, maybe I want to get a bit more specific. So maybe I want to say that it was called with, and I can pass an object 
just like I expected to get called. We call it target point. And there we go. Test has passed. So this is just a quick intro into how you can do some um, uh, unit testing with Jest in the API, right? So we've mocked the function on the map view that we want to just check to make sure that we actually called that method. And we've gone ahead and mocked the constructors for the map in the map view, just make sure that they were called when we expected them to get called a particular method. And we wrote this full method out along with all of our tests here to make sure it's going to work. Okay, so this is just a quick look at how you could use Jest to do test-driven development with the ArcGIS API for JavaScript. Uh, you could use this in your apps and kind of um, go write your tests as you go, kind of think about what it is that you want to do. Uh, you'll hear a lot of people talk about TDE and test-driven development and writing tests. I don't think you have to do test-driven development necessarily, but it is good practice to write your test. And doing it like this, where you write out the test of what you expect to happen, and then you write the code to get the test to pass. It's, you know, it makes for writing more test, but it does make it for uh, your application to be a bit safer, right? Because now, um, you know, I can go ahead and continue to work on my application and work on my views, whether I'm using Vue.js, React, whatever it is, I work on these various components and make sure that whatever work I do there isn't breaking other pieces, right? And there's, uh, depending on what framework you're using, like if you're using Vue, or React, or Angular even, or Ember, uh, writing a unit test for those can be a little bit different. You just, just kind of want to make sure that you write tests for what you expect to be um, rendered by those components, right? So that's a, a completely different uh, video. If anyone's interested, in that, I can cover that for maybe something else. But this is really key what I want to show to using uh, Jest with the ArcGIS API for JavaScript to do stuff. So again, good practice. I'm not very adamant about it but I do think it's something you should look at trying to do. So if you have any questions, go ahead and leave them below. Don't forget to comment, like, subscribe, and let me know what you want to see next time. Thanks.